Welcome to Kind of Report this week. I'm Lorna Vergelli. Thank you for joining us. With the holiday season in full swing, Executive Ike Leggett and county officials gather at the parking lot of Congressional Shopping Plaza in Rockville to remind shoppers to respect the handicapped parking spaces and to be extra careful while walking and driving in parking lots. According to authorities, this can be a very vulnerable time of the year when it comes to pedestrian and traffic safety. County Executive Ike Leggett is encouraging residents to make a safety priority this holiday season, especially to keep heads up, slow down, and look around in parking lots. From now until December 24th, our police and firefighters will be going to several of the shopping centers throughout the county. They will give out reusable bags stuffed with these safety reminders, and these are the bags that you have. It says, look out for each other and guidance and so forth. And inside, there's information about safety and uh, tips that you can follow in order to ensure that safety is clearly on your mind in shopping centers especially. Last year, the county began an educational awareness campaign about parking lot pedestrian safety, asking drivers and pedestrians to avoid distractions. It's important for everyone to make sure that they're paying attention while in their car, that they're not driving distracted, that they're not holding a phone, they're not texting. Um, don't assume that pedestrians see you. Oftentimes, they're as distracted as they're walking to the store. Um, be especially cautious when you back out of a space. Every day in Montgomery County, there's a pedestrian struck in a parking lot somewhere. That sums up to over 400 pedestrians struck each year in parking lots. Officials are also asking the public to respect the disability parking spaces, not to park on those spaces, not even for a minute, unless with a legal placard and the presence of the person who was issued the disability permit. This campaign is very important to me and the commission and all those people with disabilities because so often when we're out, uh, when you go out to shop uh, and you can't find a parking space, all of us understand that frustration. But certainly you can imagine when there's only maybe four or five spaces available for me to park, if I go out and I try to shop and I can't find a place to park, that means I cannot do my shopping. Police will be on the lookout for those violating the law and parking in disability spaces. The fine in Montgomery County is $250. The council has unanimously passed a bill that redefines road and sidewalk standards in Montgomery County. The measure is the work of council members Roger Berliner and Hans Rimmer, who say the end goal here is safety. Susan Kennedy reports. The new guidelines are aimed at emerging urban areas in the county that are developing at a rapid pace. The bill limits the width of roads and also strongly encourages developers to put sidewalks in. Councilmember Roger Berliner says it's a progressive approach to our urban streets. We need to look at our urban centers differently than we do our suburban communities, and our road code didn't reflect that. In our urban centers, we are trying to get enlivened places. We're trying to make it safe for pedestrians. We're trying to make it inviting for bicyclists. Well, if you have six, eight lanes of traffic, if you have wide roads and if you're encouraging people to drive quickly, that's not what you want in your urban centers. A key aspect of the legislation is to set a target speed of 25 miles per hour for all county streets in urban areas. With more and more residents getting out of their cars, these new standards will create districts where residents can walk and feel safe while allowing for traffic to keep moving. We're trying to change everyone's expectations for how quickly they should be able to move and, you know, so that people aren't aggravated when they're driving and at the same time, um, you know, people who are walking or biking feel safe. It's about everyone being comfortable in that district. Both council members say they hope these changes will not only limit the number of pedestrian collisions, but also change how people live in their community. What we're saying with these new standards in part is that we want to design roads for people going slower. So it is in our urban areas we want to encourage people to slow down so that we can create more life there. We've given such priority to cars in our county forever. And this is a way in which we say in these spaces, actually we need to give priority to other important values. 
In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. If there's one thing politicians can rally around, it's traffic. So when the City of Rockville Council invited neighboring Gaithersburg and Montgomery County elected leaders to a discussion on the proposed bus rapid transit system, it was a full house. Here's a story from Rockville 11. Rockville's Mayor and Council hosted the Montgomery County Council members and Gaithersburg Mayor and Council for a discussion on the bus rapid transit system route planned on Maryland 355 through Gaithersburg and Rockville. I think it's just an opportunity for us all to get comfortable talking with each other about something that is so important to the county and so um, potentially very helpful to the cities of Gaithersburg and Rockville. This is the first time that the Rockville Mayor and Council have gathered county and Gaithersburg officials together to discuss the 355 BRT route. My hope is that we find a lot of common ground. We have, this is uh, unprecedented for us, uh, or at least for me, uh, to, to be in a meeting with uh, the City of Rockville and the County uh, Council and the County Executive. If we come out of here tonight with a lot of common ground and feeling like we're really on the same page, I think that'd be a great thing. With planned BRT routes on portions of Maryland 355 that cross both Gaithersburg and Rockville, it is important that the three jurisdictions collaborate in support of achieving the goals of the county and the state, while also meeting the needs of both municipalities. There will also be the opportunity for public input. Um, we are currently uh, forming a number of corridor advisory committees on, on all of the four corridors that we're studying and we're in the process of selecting uh, members to serve on those committees. But the meetings will be open meetings so even if you're not a member you're welcome to attend the meeting um, and hear what's going on with the studies. Um, and we're also looking at other ways of engaging the community. We have a website uh, so we'll be posting information there. We'll be looking for feedback and other ways from the community so there, there will be plenty of opportunity for engagement. The cities, county, and state will continue to work in close coordination as the corridor planning process continues. For County Report This Week, I'm Morgan Lash. Executive Ike Leggett held a media roundtable this week to discuss the six-point economic development program outlined in his inaugural speech and other current issues, such as the budget outlook for the coming fiscal year. Leggett said he had a recent briefing and it seems there will be more economic challenges for the FY16 operational budget. The executive said the deficit amount might be smaller, but the challenge is greater. It is a difficult challenge and here's why. When we dealt with these larger challenges in the past, uh, we had more options. And some of the options that we exercised were options that we exercised for the first time. Keep in mind that we eliminated 10% of the entire workforce, we furloughed employees, we uh, eliminated COLAs, cost of living adjustments, and a variety of things across the board. The executive recently took the resignation of Steve Silverman, the director of the Department of Economic Development. Nega said that Silverman has been a great asset in supporting economic development in the county, and the department will likely continue on the same program path. Former County Council member Phil Andrews, who served District 3 for 16 years, will remain in county government. The state's attorney for Montgomery County announced the hiring of Andrews, who will become part of the community outreach team and will focus on crime prevention initiatives. Andrews lost to County Executive Isaiah Leggett in the Democratic primary in June. As part of the community outreach team, Andrews will speak and work with community groups, PTAs, and homeowner associations to educate residents about how they can avoid becoming victims of crime. Coming up next on County Report this week, we introduce you to Holidays, a pop-up store in Silver Spring. And we invite you to be a good neighbor when it comes to shoveling snow. Stay with us, County Report This Week is coming right back. Hey mister, down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means 
big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Today we feature a holiday pop-up store that encourages residents to shop local this holiday season. My MC Media's Alini Barros reports. Alini? I'm in Silver Spring at the grand opening of Holidays, a pop-up store that supports local artists and vendors. Phantom Street Market, a weekly marketplace in downtown Silver Spring, is the nonprofit behind this holiday pop-up store, which is located inside Pyramid Atlantic Arts Center in Silver Spring. We brought in 30 of our best vendors from the Fenton Street Market. We wanted to stay really local, so a lot of Silver Spring artists were chosen, and then just vendors who we've worked with for a long time who we knew would be able to provide all the inventory we'd need and things like that. According to the director of the Silver Spring Regional Center, right now this is the only pop-up store in Silver Spring, and it's a great way for the community to invest and support the local economy. It is really the multiplying effect, the multiplying effect of local spending. You spend those that X number of dollars and the artist that lives here or lives close by spends it locally and they spend it locally and before you know it, it's been multiplied five times with the same dollar bill that hasn't left the community. When people shop locally, um, their impact is felt so much more than shopping at a, a big box national retailer. Uh, it has a 70% better impact in the local economy when you buy goods and services from, from your neighbors and from, from local merchants. The owner of Hooked and Loopy, Sarah Potter, is the artist behind hand-kneaded and hand-crocheted toys, gifts, and stuffed animals. She likes to see the store open all year round. They've done such a marvelous job setting up. They're absolutely magnificent to the vendors. Megan and Amina have been amazing to all of us to nurture us and to give us a place to showcase our work. If you want to visit holidays, check out the Fenton Street Market website to find out more. For County Report this week, I'm Malini Barrows. During the holiday season, the Washington Regional Alcohol Program is offering a free cab ride service for drivers who have been drinking. Tom Pope tells us more about Silver Ride in this week's transportation update. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, a Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. This season, don't let a holiday celebration become a tragedy. Every year, more than 400 people are injured in alcohol-related collisions in Montgomery County. If you're drinking, designate a driver. If anyone in your party has had too much to drink, see that they get a ride home with someone sober or call them a taxi. The Washington Regional Alcohol Program, or RAP, is a nonprofit public private coalition formed to fight drunk driving. Through state, federal, and corporate funding, RAP operates a free cab service called Sober Ride. If you need a ride home from the district or surrounding counties, including Montgomery, call Sober Ride at 800 200 Taxi. Sober Ride will give you a free ride home up to a $30 fare. Since 1993, Sober Ride has provided 50,000 free cab rides to impaired drivers. For more information on taxi service in Montgomery County, go to our website at montgomerycountymd.gov. We're working to keep your holidays safe. With the snow season underway, the county wants to remind residents about its online tool to make it easier to decide when to safely venture out following a snowstorm. The map tool will show the progress of snow plows throughout the county and indicate when emergency roads, primary neighborhood streets, and neighborhood streets have been cleared. When a snowstorm is predicted, we put up on our website, on our homepage, a link to all kinds of information about snow. You know, whether things are closed, open, and included in that is a snow map 
which shows the progress of the snow plows as they're going around the county and clearing snow. Because you can put in your address and see where the snow plows are in relationship to where you live. To check out the snow map, go to montgomerycountynd.gov slash snow map. The county also encourages its residents to sign up for Alert Montgomery to help prepare for the snow emergencies. Sign up for Alert Montgomery, and if you go to the county's website, you can sign up and get the type of alert that you want to get. You aren't going to get every alert that's sent out, but especially during snowstorms or weather emergencies, it's very helpful to get those tips. You can sign up at alert.montgomerycountymd.gov. Regarding snow, county residents are reminded that it is required by law to clear sidewalks in front of and alongside their properties within 24 hours of the end of a snowstorm. Keith Compton the from the county's Department of Transportation Lord, was our guest uh, at the county's the Spanish language radio show uh, this week, and he explained that the county only enforces the law it's, it's when a complaint is any, filed. Any... He also encouraged residents to be good neighbors and shovel the snow for school kids, older adults, and folks that depend on transit. So this year we are asking folks, to everyone, to be a good neighbor, to help uh, 24 hours after the snow stops. Uh, you're responsible to clear the sidewalks in front of your house. We're asking for everyone to be good neighbors this year, to help your neighbor, uh, the elderly and children and so forth, to shovel their sidewalks, community spirit, and it's fun. Good neighbors clear their sidewalks of ice and snow. Be a good neighbor. Check MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash Save Sidewalks for more information. Coming up on County Report this week, some MCPS students meet with the Board of Education. And several high-profile Latinos in the entertainment industry visit Montgomery College. Stay with us, County Report this week. It's coming right back. There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Back to County Report this week, I'm Mona Vigeli. Student representatives from many MCPS schools recently joined voices and presented the Board of Education with a point of view from their perspective. MCPS TV has a story. Nearly 50 student leaders from throughout Montgomery County Public Schools met with members of the Board of Education and senior MCPS administrators Thursday, December 4th, to share their ideas and concerns. The purpose is to basically get all these students' leaders together and hear from the Board of Education, have their questions answered, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation, and I think just really learn and understand um, what goes on at the county level, and for the board members to also hear from the students. I do believe in and students did share their ideas. The event was organized into a small group dialogue format to allow everyone an opportunity to have their ideas heard. Board members and senior staff visited the tables and listened and participated in the conversations. Student concerns were varied. The biggest topic this year to me is the achievement gap at my school. We were also working on cell phones during lunch and environmental issues, the park assessment and the new curriculum and how we can engage students who aren't as engaged in school and help them throughout that. Like technology and Chromebooks, like how they're innovating everything like now. Student leaders will take what they heard at the meeting and share it with their student government colleagues back at their home schools and to draw some more students in into student advocacy um, to really understand the importance of you know reaching out to elected officials and reaching out to the adults that make these decisions for our school system. 
The students are the most important stakeholder in the system. They are the ones who experience the policies that the board passes. They're the ones who really experience the day-to-day, -day, the curriculum that's in place. They are the ones who experience the testing that's coming down. So hearing from the, 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 the really the real participants in MCPS, the students, is their, their, their feedback is really the most valuable. Montgomery College students exploring careers in TV and film recently had the chance to hear from Hollywood business executives about the road to a career in the industry. Montgomery College's Carolina Galeano has the story. Of car alarms and all these things. Well, I went to SC. Latino executives from Hollywood gathered at Montgomery College Rockville to discuss valuable lessons learned from careers at MTV, NBC, Nielsen, and Jerry Bruckheimer Films. Their resounding advice centered on the importance of personal branding. So when you're starting to go through that, um, what I call the growing pains of college, and then you start going into the workforce, you got to be more mindful of how it is that you want to be perceived, and that starts with social media. You know, if you're going to go out there and look to apply for a corporate job, then you may want to think twice about what you're posting up online, right? Because someone like myself may stumble across it, or someone may not think, oh wait. Um, yeah, those videos on YouTube, not a good idea. It's about branding. It's about branding yourself so you're, you're taken seriously. But it, what makes you interesting is your point of view. And when you're branding yourself, when you're marketing yourself, you're creating a need for yourself. Um, what people really are, gravitate towards is point of view, a clear, concise point of view, who you are, where you come from, what are you saying, what do you want, and why do you want people to go on that journey with you. Students aspiring to become producers, screenwriters, and actors can build their path to Hollywood even now, as the panelists shared. Jobs such as working at a family restaurant can be some of the best preparation. For those of you who know about restaurants, it is the hardest job you're ever gonna have to do. You become a finance expert, you become a customer service expert, you become security, you become police, you become a cook, and you figure out how to organize. So whether that journey begins here in Rockville campus or your local restaurant, the skills acquired and the personal brand you build are key elements to a future career in television and film. For County Report this week in Rockville, I'm Carolina Galeano. Best-selling author David Baldacci visited Montgomery County to promote his latest book, The Escape. My MC Media's Sonia Burke joins us with more. Sonia? Lorna, it's not every day that the number one best-selling author in the country visits the city of Gaithersburg, but author David Baldacci was at the Gaithersburg Library to talk about his new book, The Escape. David, number one, wow. This is... I just had to beat that guy named Stephen King. <laughs> Beth Ann Patrick led the discussion with the award-winning author, who for over an hour kept his fans smiling and on the edge of their seats as he entertained them with stories from the road, including a recent meeting with the President of the United States. The President Obama wheels around and, and says in a voice so loud I can hear him, even though I'm across the store, wow, he's famous. <laughs> He also shared some stories about his research in the field. I didn't want to write a military series and just Google everything. I mean, that's stupid. Anybody can do that. So getting out and actually doing some of the stuff they do. His fans said they enjoyed this event immensely. I thought it was really great. He's really interesting, great storyteller. As the books come out, I read them. He is one of my favorite. Yeah, I, I, lo I just love the suspense. I love the mystery and I love how they culminate at the end. Oh, he's just great. The books he writes, there's lots of intrigue, lots of twists and turns of the plots. It's really fun reading. Well, I love him. I'm almost finished with his latest book, and I, it was riveting. So you, you interview a lot of authors, as you just told me. So how does he compare to other authors you've interviewed? Is he one of your favorites? He is one of my favorites, and I'll tell you why. He is passionate about what he does. I get out and I to meet readers, the people who love books, and I, I love talking about books, importance of libraries. I grew up in libraries as a kid, and that's where I discovered the world, through books, so it's important. This is such an exciting moment for the Gaithersburg Book Festival. He has the number one selling book in America right now, and we have him here in Gaithersburg. For more information about the upcoming Gaithersburg Book Festival, visit the festival's website. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. Coming up on County Report this week, we take you to the celebration honoring the Northwest Jowers winning season. And we'll tell you when and where the budget forums will be held. Stay with us, we'll be right back.
The Montgomery College men's soccer team just finished a terrific season. The Raptors went 19-3-1, claimed their third straight Region 20 and Maryland JUCO titles, and finished fifth in the country at the just-completed National Championship Tournament, where Raptors forward Jonathan Barron was named to the All-National Tournament team. Now is the perfect time to register for winter session and spring semester classes at Montgomery College. Choose courses from more than 130 majors and programs offered at our campus locations and online. Register today online or at any of our three campuses. With the winter weather upon us, don't forget to sign up for MC Alert. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Mona Pagelli. The Class 4A State Football Trophy will stay in Montgomery County after the Northwest Dowers of Germantown capped off their season winning back-to-back -back state titles. The team and the community celebrated the win on a rainy night in Baltimore. Krista Brick reports. The setting, m and Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens on a wet December Friday night. On the line, proof that the Northwest Jags of Germantown could dominate again in Class 4A to become the first team in 15 years to pull off a repeat. It's rainy and cold, but that hasn't dampened the spirits of this Northwest crowd as they cheer on their Jaguars in the Class 4A State Football Championships. We're very, very excited. It's our second time back. I guess they call that a repeat, so um, couldn't be more proud of our kids. This is a great way to send our seniors out. You know, either way, win or lose, I do have the best, best team. I also have the very best fans. I'm very proud of you, but win or lose, we love you and you're the best. Both the Jags and Old Mill Patriots struck early in the game, trading touchdowns. By the half, it was 2017 in favor of the Jags. This is nothing new. We were at States last year. Yep. We dominated, and all we expect to do is come here and dominate again. Yes, we, we expect are. nothing but the best from our team because they've showed us nothing but the best the whole season. Out of the tunnel in the second half, the Jags started with the ball and never gave up the lead. Jags, small but elusive running back E.J. Lee, delivered with two scores. There is no superstars on Northwest team. They're all a team, and they all play great. Um, and they live by that, that there are no superstars. It's awesome. It is awesome. We're very blessed. You can't imagine what it's like. Baltimore Ravens' Jacoby Jones made a surprise appearance to watch the game. You never know what happened in a game like this. State championship, these kids are going to play their hearts out, represent their school well. It's going to be number low. What did happen was a Northwest knee in the final few seconds to end the game 34-31 and bring home another trophy. You know, our bond is so strong on this team, and it just feels amazing to uh, come off uh, state championship two years in a row. I just told them I'm proud of them. You know, I'm going to miss the seniors a lot, and I'm proud of them, and uh, it was an awesome experience, good ride. For County Report this week, I'm Krista Brooke. Now let's meet our pet of the week. Here is Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Kathy? Your pet of the week this week is Eugene, and he is very special because he's an all-black kitty. And as I've said before, we have trouble adapting the all-black cat sometimes. People still feel their bad luck. And now you know better than that. So come on down to the shelter and visit Eugene. He's five months old, he's neutered, and he is a permachine. He's ready to go home with you. Give us a call at 240-252-2555 for more information or visit Eugene and all the other animals here at the shelter at mchumane.org. We would like to close the show this week inviting county residents to participate in the upcoming FY16 budget forums. As every year, Executive Ike Leggett will host five budget forums throughout the county during the month of January to hear from you about your priorities for his operational budget. Here are the dates and locations for each of the forums. The first one will take place at Black Rock Center for the Arts in Germantown and the rest in different regional centers throughout the county. All of them start at 7 p.m. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Mona Vigili and thank you for watching.